Hi, I'm Cody Alexander with MatchQuarters.com. Welcome to the Art of X show. This is episode three. Today, we're going to be talking about press and the different ty types of techniques, the different ways of it being taught, kind of the good, the bad, uh, and really just a basic overview of how press is taught in different programs. First, why press? Press is a tool that is used by a lot of coaches at a lot of levels. Go to the NFL and you see press all the time. Okay, go to college and you see press all the time. Go to high school. That's kind of where you start seeing a little bit less of press because people are afraid, hey, if I go up there and I press all the time, that, that Joe over there is better than my Jimmy. And so he's just going to run by. And so I think the one thing that you have to, if you are a coach and you are thinking about press, I have to remind myself of this all the time. The thing about press is that it is scary. That if, if you get one misstep, you punch with the wrong hand, you step with the wrong foot, you don't move your feet, uh, it can be a fatal. And it can be, hey, the other, the other band's playing. But the thing that I constantly have to remind myself is, is when I, you play soft, you're going to basically force one-on-one -on -one tackles. You're going to get throws underneath. You're going to allow the receivers to create space. And I think for me, I am always wanting to challenge the receivers you know as a defense we are supposed to constrain space so giving the receivers soft coverage off coverage you're kind of allowing them to create that space and to kind of get that cushion you know the past couple of years i've really been working hard on myself at least to hey challenge my kids to press a little bit more regardless of skill set i think the obviously the higher the skill set the more you want to press, the lower the skill set, the more you want to play a little bit off. But what I have found is that off coverage is harder to teach because it's all about eyes and it's all about footwork and being able to break and drive, understanding stems, uh, understanding body control and where I'm at on, uh, is the receiver stemming me outside? Is the receiver stemming me inside? Where's alignment? There's a lot of things that go into off coverage. And that's why I start with off coverage when I do my pedagogy to get the eyes right, to get the feet right before we ever move into press. When you do that, then you have to remind yourself again, hey, we need to press. So why do you press? The reason why you press is to eliminate the route tree. That's the number one biggest reason. Pat Narduzzi, head coach of, of Pitt, he talked in a clinic last year about why they run press quarters. And the reason why they run press quarters, he says it's simple. We know that we're going to get basically two routes from the number one receiver. We're going to get slants and we're going to get fades. And so by doing that, you've cut down the teaching. You've cut down the route tree. You've cut down things that you need your corners to work on. Think about it. If I told you, hey, 90% of the time, 80% of the time, you're going to get either a fade or a slant route. And that's all you're going to work. Think about what you could do in your practice time in your teaching progressions, man, if we could do that and we just know, hey, these are the two things that, man, we can get really good at two things. You know, I think most people understand if we focus on two things instead of 10, 15, 20 different things, then, man, we can get really good at that. So that's one reason why. Predictable outcomes. So like I just said, if you can give your kids predictable outcomes, they're going to play faster. A lot of times when we think as coaches, we think of cowardice on the field, or we think of uh, them being slow on the field. A lot of that time is that mental process of lagging the kids behind is that we're giving the kids too much to think about. So again, if I go back and I say, look, we're going to predict the outcome for you. If you press, you're going to get this. If you press, you only have to worry about a fade route and you only have to worry about a slant route. I can help them in that case. Wide receivers hate contact. Look, we play an offensive game. And if you're one of those coaches that is always complaining about linemen down the field, you can't touch receivers anymore, defensive PI all the time. I've always argued that's how the game's being played now. And so therefore you have to adjust. Look, this is an offensive game. Receivers hate contact. We've got to make sure that that contact starts at the very beginning of that route stem. Because if we don't, then we're letting them just have free release. Anymore at every level of football from Sunday to Friday, they are getting more and more option routes. You know, we always have had option routes in the NFL. 
We've always had optional routes at the college level. Now what we're getting at in, in, in the high school level is, is run to space. You're either going on a vertical stem or you're bending it into space. And so what you want to do is you want to create that contact early in the route tree and eliminate that space for that receiver. Don't give them the option. Force it into a predictable outcome. You're either going to run a slant really quick off the off the line or you're running a fade route now once we get into that then we can work technique to help the back shoulder fade or to help the comeback if you end up getting in phase with that receiver those are things that we can work and that kids can understand once you get that internal clock in your head okay what's the down to distance how far am i away from the sticks once i get to seven eight yards if those hits drop i know that it's a comeback Okay, because that's kind of that magical distance. Seven to 10 yards is that magical distance where receivers cut on their route. So I know that, look, if I get to about seven, eight, and he starts dropping those hips, I know it's a comeback. Okay, if he turns his numbers to me, I know it's I know it's a back shoulder fade. How do I play my hands? You want to eliminate space for that receiver because they hate contact. Offense doesn't want you to contact the receiver. It messes up the timing. It messes up the quarterback. It messes up the receiver. And it eliminates space. I think of it like play basketball. Most of your corners are probably really good point guards. They're probably really good on defense. They probably are really good at moving laterally. And so, therefore, what I try and, I try and teach it as, look, we're funneling the receiver either to the 12th man, which is the sideline, or to our safety help, which is near the hash or in the middle of the field. So we're playing basketball. I, I, I liken it, when I, when I teach press, I liken it to uh, being a point guard on an ISO play. Everybody's outside the box. It's just you and the man in front of, in front of you. You don't want them to go to their dominant hand, okay? And so the way that I relate this is we want to funnel the receiver to our help. Okay, so think about where you don't have help is that that receiver's dominant hand, right? So I want to either be inside and funnel you to the sideline, or I want to be outside and I want to funnel you to my safety who's on the hash, or I want to funnel you to the middle of the field where I've, where I've got a post safety. So it's just like playing basketball. You don't want to open the gate and let the guy just go and posterize you and dunk on you. You want to stay square. You want to attack the hip. Uh, the hip that you want to funnel them away from and you want to stay in front of the ball and so that's how I kind of liken it when I go into teaching press that's how I that's how I end up teaching the press to most of my DBs because almost all of them have played basketball or think that they're really good basketball players and so you they they understand that and so they understand that lingo and I try and use visuals when when I teach things and so that's kind of the visual that I have found uh, to be the most helpful is you're on an ISO play. Everybody's boxed out. Everybody's outside of the lane. You are now one-on-one. -on -one. You're not going to let them, you're not going to let them just dunk on you. So you're going to stay square And that technique combined with the footwork that I then teach that, that really gives those kids a great visual. This is where people get different. Do you believe in a hard press or do you believe in a soft press? And what's the difference? I prefer a soft press. I want that receiver to mirror motor, foot fire, whatever you want to call it. You know, those great cone drills that, they, that we see all during the off season in the summer. They're all, you know, pumping around those cones, getting off. You know, they've got the triple move off the line. Let them do that and tire themselves out. I, and I, I, told, I tell my, my guys all the time, if you just scoot back, you just inch back, you call it an inch technique, I call it a feather. But if I, if you just, feather back you inch back and you just keep your leverage and you let that receiver do all the foot firing they want they will literally run into you because you didn't move the whole point of that foot fire is to get the db to move in a direction that they want them to to then create space for themselves and then attack that space and try and gain leverage on you as a db if all i do is i just inch back i keep my eyes down on the near hip and I just let that receiver run all of his foot fire. And then once he makes his break, he's going to have to make a decision. The ball is going to have to come out at some point. You know, this isn't a one-on-one -on -one drill at a camp where you can do seven moves because nobody's rushing the quarterback. So in a game, that guy's got to make a move and he's got to do it relatively quickly. So most receivers, if they're running a fade, they're just going to stab inside, run a speed release. If they're running a slant route, they're going to stab outside 
and break inside. So what I tell my kids is that if we just scooch back and you go, you mirror that, mirror that step. So if they step inside, I step outside. If they step outside, I step inside. You're most likely going to end up being in, in a better position for that. And, and that's something that you really have got to work with your kids is, and, and I call it a panic grill where I get them in, in front of a, a, a receiver and I just have that receiver foot fire and they just get used to inching back, inching back, inching back, looking down. Okay. And then we come back and I say, okay, now the receiver is going to give you a stab one way or the other. So foot fire stab. And all I want them to do is inch back, work opposite the stab. Okay. Inch back, work opposite the stab. Then we end up going back into it and I say, okay, now we're going to put everything together. You're going to get the foot fire, you're going to get the stab, and then now you're going to get the route. You're either going to get a fade route or you're going to get a slant route. And so that's when that's when then we put it all together. So I'll, I'll go from the panic drill all the way to an actual press drill where we're working slants or we're working fade routes. When does the hard technique come in? I think hard technique is really good if you're running cover two and you're outside leverage and you're just going to jam that guy. You can get in a trail technique because here's the thing. Hard technique, you're going to fail at some point. You're going to miss that guy. That guy's gonna that guy's gonna be a little bit better than you. Hard technique, you really got to be up close so that you can really get into that guy quickly. I like it more more or less when it, we're either playing one double or I've got a, a cover two where I know that safety is going to be over top and I can get into a, a trail technique that that's not that big of a deal. That's when I like a hard technique. And lastly, I like a hard technique if I know I'm physically better than that guy. If I know that no matter what, I, he can't outrun me, I'm stronger than him, I'm bigger than him, I know that I can control this guy, man, have at it. And I tell my kids that all the time. If we get to a point and we're like, look, that, that guy over there is not very good and we should be able to dominate him, go jam him up. Because there's nothing more demoralizing for a receiver than to just be stuck at the line. And, and of course, again, you've got to go back to your technique. You can't hold, you can't just, you can't just grab a guy. You can't throw him around. We see that again, we see that stuff in, in, in the summer and camps and all of it. That's not real football. Okay. So when you, when I teach a hard technique, I'm teaching it more of, look, we are going to stab the receiver. We're going to initiate the contact. And then I'm going to, then I'm going to retreat and allow him to then make, make that. It's shocking for a receiver if they get just jammed at the, at the line of scrimmage. And then now they've got to make a plan. Now they've got to make a decision. It's kind of that, yeah, everybody thinks that they, they've got a plan until you get punched in the mouth. Okay. Well, in the soft, you're letting them, Hey, let them use their plan and just wear themselves out. And then we're just going to sit back. And then I'm just, then I'm going to attack, attack your route. Whereas a hard technique is like, look, I'm bringing the offense to you. I'm going to punch you in the mouth and I'm going to see what your plan is. Okay. Knowing that I've got help over top. I'm not a big fan of hard technique. If you know, you're not going to have help. Like if it can just turn into a fade route and I don't have much help, I'm not a big fan of the hard technique. So soft versus hard, uh, if it pressed, I'm, I'm a fan of both. Use both of the techniques. We're going to talk about both the techniques, but I teach a soft press first. And then if, if we know that we're physically dominant, then we start working that hard press stuff, uh, the, the stab punch and, and making sure that, hey, the, if I'm going to use two hands, okay, I better bring my feet with it. And, and, and it better be quick because what I don't want is to press with both hands and lock the hips. Because anytime you press with both hands, you're going to lock the hips. And if you lock your hips, you're not moving. Uh, and so you don't, want the receiver, you don't want the receivers moving and then we're not moving. So finally, we're going to talk about the different techniques that I, I teach when we have a Meg technique, when it's man everywhere he goes. I don't really have that much help. It's kind of mono and mono, hard technique that we just talked that we just talked about what it looks like in one double, and then a two bail technique where we look like we're going to play press, but we're really just using body press. And it really, it's just more or less just, it's kind of a soft version of that hard cover two press, just kind of what that looks like uh, in cover two. I teach a closed stance. I've had kids that are able to uh, play coverage both ways, open and closed. But when it comes to press, you want a closed stance. So we're going to break down the different closed stance techniques. I like to teach a feather. I like it, uh, kind of a motor technique, inch technique, if you've ever heard of that. I call that a feather. And then I also teach a kick step. What I have found is some of the smaller corners are really good at the feather. They're not really good at the kick step. 
so when you get a bigger DB, they're not necessarily great at the, at the motor. They got big feet. They got long legs. It's kind of hard for them to, to beat the drum, as I like to say. So I teach a kick step. And I've had, I've had a tour uh, when I was at Mesquite Horn. I had two Division One corners. We taught one to do the feather technique. He was great at it. The other one had to do a kick step. When I was at Midlothian, I had a kid. It was a four, three kid. I had another kid that wasn't, you know, he wasn't even that, that much taller, but he was just kind of stiff in the hips. He was more of a track kid needed to do it, do the kick step. I, in my other corner on the other side, he was kind of a, a, a smaller kid, real quick twitch, man. He was great. He was great at the, at the feather. So again, do what's best for your kids. And that's kind of what I've always been as a coach. Look, what worked for me as a player may not work for my own players. What technique that I learn may not be the best technique for that player. And there's always things that you can do differently. And the kids obviously are who are playing the game. And so you need to make sure that you teach them the technique. So we're going to break down the different techniques. First off, let's talk about our stance. What should it look like? Okay, eyes on hips. If my eyes are up, my hands are up. Okay, eyes bring the feet. If my eyes are up, my posture is going to come up. I'm going to be too tall. Okay, elbows at a 90 degree angle. When we talk about running form, right, we're teaching running in the off season or you're a sprint coach. You want those arms at 90 and you want the shoulder hinge. You don't want to beat the drum with your hands. You don't want your hands down. And look, I get it. It looks really cool. And I tell my kids all the time, man, look. Those DBs in the NFL are freaks. They're aliens. They're not normal human beings. That's why they're in the NFL. What I found at my level is that if I put my hands down, what's the very first thing that I got to do? I got to get in running formation. I got to get in, the, in my power formation. So what happens? The hands come up. And normally if the hands come up, I'm bringing my body up. Now I'm standing up tall. So what I tell them is, hey, elbows at a 90. I tell them to, to play the piano, get your hands on the table. Some of them like to have their hands a little bit lower. I know I do. Okay. But I tell them you, they don't go pat, they don't go past the kneecaps. So right here, you can see Jalen Ramsey. He's got his knees. He's got his hands right at his knees. He's got his elbows in a 90 degree angle. He's got a nice posture. Okay. Knees bent. And I think it's good to have like an image like this of Jalen Ramsey, who we all know is one of the best corners in the NFL. This is textbook technique. He's going up against DK Metcalf, who's a large receiver. He's really fast. So we've got to make sure that we're playing exactly the great technique that we need. And then here we have, we have an NFL guy using the technician. That's why I created this image so that I can use this with my kids and say, hey, look, the things that I'm teaching, these are the same things that you're going to see on, on Sunday, right? That's everybody's aspirations. So here's a guy. That's one of the best corners in, in the league. And he's got his eyes on the hip. He's got his elbows at a 90. He's got his knee, knees bent. He's in a tuck position and he's running a closed stance. The other thing that I, that I kind of like about this, you can kind of see is he's got his left foot back a little further and that's okay. As long as it's within the in, in step. So as long as my, my foot is in, in the arch of my other foot, then we're okay. What I don't want is a large open stance, large open stance. What that means is that I'm either bailing out or that I, I'm going to open the gate and we don't want to open the gate when we play press. So this is a good visual for what a closed stance should look like when I'm pressing a receiver. So let's look at the technique that I teach. So this is what we call a feather technique, an inch technique. Notice how I take a proactive step inside. So this would be as though, hey, I'm in meg press. That's normally what most people start out teaching is, look, you got no help. You're pressing. Here's, here's, here's the receiver. Let's get after it. So what I do right here is this is a what I call a proactive step inside. All it is is just a six inch step inside because what's the worst thing that can happen to me is that he works inside and runs a slant route and now I don't have any help. It's Meg, right? Protect the high percentage throw. High percentage throw inside, low percentage throw outside. I'll have the quarterback come and I'll say, what is an easier throw for you? Is the slant an easier throw for you? Or is a fade rod an easier throw for you? Almost 100% of quarterbacks will answer, oh, slant, it's easy. It's right coming, coming, working to me. It's right in front of my face. It's an easy, it's an easy throw. Fade route is, you know, I got to make sure, is it a back shoulder? Is my guy on top? Is he open? Do I need to just throw him open? You know, where is he in relation to the numbers in the sideline? Am I dropping it into the bucket? Because it's right, there's a lot of things going on. In a slant route, it's just throw to space, let that kid keep running. 
So for me, that proactive step is really important. And then I'm getting on my tracks. Okay. I'm letting that receiver do his foot fire. You can see that my, you can see the bill of my hat. So you can see that, the, the, that my eyes are down. Okay. Arm, arms are at a 90 degree hands, no lower than the kneecaps feet together, close stance. You can see too. I have a little bit, uh, my foot is in, in my arch. So I have a little bit of an open stance, proactive step feather back. So that's what we call a soft press. That's what we call an inch technique. Okay, so for your taller corners, okay, this is what uh, some people call this a scooch inch tech. Some people do call this an inch technique. I call this a kick step. You can see right there, I'm doing the same thing, taking a little bit of, of a, a push from, from the front, and then I'm just working six inch steps, feet in the ground. Okay, so the concept is the same. I'm either going to feather back, feet in the ground, beat the drum so I can make a play on the ball, or I'm going to kick step quick, 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 quick feet in the ground so I can then make a play on the ball. So again, let's look at the proactive step. I just want to kind of give a, a little bit, one more visual of it again, when you look at the feather. Now this is, this is more of a red zone technique where I'm going to take a hard inside step. That way I'm really cutting off that slant. That's the biggest thing in the end zone. I tell kids all the time, look, man, all they got to do is cross that line. So we want to make sure that they can't cross that line. And we want to put, make that, that quarterback throw a perfect pass in order for that fade route to get there. So for me, that hard proactive step inside, getting back on track. If he were to run a fade, all I got to do is kind of hinge open, attack that, attack that hip. If he's trying to run a slant, man, I'm already, I'm already hard inside. So just wanted to show how that, how that technique changes a little bit when we get into the red zone. Let's look at some film with the different press techniques. Here's a Meg technique on the bottom. Okay. He does not have much help. Okay. This is a running team. They put formation and boundary. We're going to have the safety. We're going to have the safety working down. This guy's pretty much all by himself. Okay. Meg technique, man, everywhere he goes, you don't have any help. So he's going to be inside. Now I don't like that. He hinges open but we have an idea of what they're trying to run. Probably not going to run a slant with the safety right here, being able to cut to the hash if he needs to. He's reduced his alignment off the numbers. So we have an idea that he's probably going to run a fade route or he's going to try and run a post route. So once he gets that vertical stem, you can see the receiver comes off and gives that, he punches with that outside foot and then starts working in. Corner does a great job of getting back square. And then once he IDs that, now he's attacking the hips with eyes down, making him what I call run the hump. Now, what ends up happening is that he once he realizes that it's kind of a an, what I call an inside nine, so it's a real skinny post. This would be this would be a skinny post. He essentially runs the route for the receiver and he gets he gets inside right there. So let's look at it from the top. This is a good example of kind of that inch technique turns into a kick step. And once he sees it open, now he's going to, now he's going to get into the receiver. And here's the key that I tell kids when we do soft press, we may not initially make contact with the receiver. We're using body presence and trying to get him to run the hump, but we don't want to turn a vertical route into a track meet. So if we end up getting like right here, what a lot of young DBs do or what a lot of coaches don't necessarily understand that they have to teach this part is right here at this moment, we can turn this into a track meet and we don't want to do that. Okay. And, and think about an attract me. There's lanes on a track. You can't come out of your lane and attract me. If you come out of your lane, you're going to get DQ right in football. We're not running track. We want to get into the receiver. We want to get into that low hip. I want to cut him off. I want to hook him. I want to get my elbow into his armpit, hook that arm where I'm in control, and I want to lean into him. That's exactly what he does right here. Gets on top and basically runs the route for the receiver. So, again, that's made coverage. He's all by himself, okay? So, if we're going to press all by himself, I'd rather it be soft. I don't want it to be hard, right? Because hard, I make one mistake. Now he's gone. Soft press, I'm going to feather out. I'm going to let the receiver do all his, his foot firing. Then I'm going to get into the receiver. I'm going to cut him off and I'm going to run the route for him. Now let's look at a hard press. So we're looking up top. He's in his grill. 
He's going to he's gonna catch him right here. Notice how he's moving his feet, moving his feet, moving his feet. That would be, to me, a hard press. I'm not letting him go. Now, this ends up being a screen, but I want, I want to show the whole point right here is that, look, if I'm going to end up pressing that guy, I want to feet underneath. Notice how he's in his power stance right there. He's going to let that receiver drive me off fine, but I'm going to be right there. So if I need a release and go, go for a screen, I can. So this is a technique that we use. This is a hard press. Not a, again, for us, what I really want and kind of my philosophy and the teaching of it is, look, I don't want to press a guy unless I know I'm more dominant than that guy. I don't want to press a guy if I don't think I can run with him. Here we felt like, look, we have an under, we can we can handle this. I'm not really worried about it. We're playing man coverage because we're sending pressure. So go ahead, get up, get up in his face. And it's, and here we, the pressure ends up hitting home. We're going to double this guy right here. Okay. This was one of the top receivers in, in, in the country. He's like four-star kid. I think he was going to USC at one point. Now he's going to be outside shade. Eyes are still going to be down. He's still got the yard, yard and a half off. We're going to use the safety to play one double. So right now, he's going to keep that outside leverage. Notice how he works outside, stabs with the outside hand to control that. Look, I don't want you to go there. I'm going to stab you with the outside hand. I've got outside leverage. I'm attacking you. You're outside. I'm, I'm going to funnel you back inside. He ends up going back on a screen. We get a nice little switch right here, and then we attack, we attack the ball carrier on the screen. So this is a good example of kind of what press now looks like with one double, right? So now where's my help? He's inside. He's in the middle of the field. I'm going to play outside leverage. If you looked at the other ones with the hard and then the meg, it was inside leverage. Now, things change depending on the divider. Normally what the divider is, anything outside of the, of the apex between the hash and the numbers, we want to play inside right? If he, if he gets apex to inside, then we want to move outside. Here's what I call two bail. Okay. So we want to, we want to get close to the receiver and just use body presence to eliminate the route. So I'm not really pressing, but I'm almost kind of squatting in front of the guy, right? He can't get by me. So I'm going to squat right in front. I'm going to make contact near the sticks. I'm not bailing out. This is two bail. So everything's going to be funneled back inside to the safety. I'm outside leverage. If he tries to run a little bit of a fade, fade route right here, okay, we're going to get the comeback because it's sprint out. I'm going to squat on it right near the line. So I'm not, this is not cover three. This isn't bail quarters. We're not doing anything like that to make sure, hey, we got to get back for that fade route because I don't have any help. This is essentially, I'm going to slow the route down. I'm going to sit right in front of that receiver the whole time. He can't get by me. I'm going to sit right on top of it so that way he can't, he can't get to the line of scrimmage. Here's another look at it at up top is I'm not playing hard, okay? All I'm going to do is I'm going to funnel that receiver to the safety. Once I see that I've, I'm getting the bubble, then I'm going to kind of squat down right there. And on what we got with this team was that they were running bubbles with curls. And so that outside linebacker needs to do a little bit better job of understanding, look, I've got a corner outside. I don't need a, I don't need to work to the flat. I need to hold that uh, kind of that wall two player. Where's my number two, but you can see how the corner isn't necessarily baiting. If that ball were to come out, let's say our, my outside linebacker wasn't there and that ball were to come out probably right here, that, that corner would be able to drive on it. If they, if they want to throw the bubble, which is a negative route, corner is able to drive on it. This is a nice, this is a nice little technique right here where we're seeing that two bail technique. Now he's going to sit right in the other. And then the last one, same thing up top. I'm going to stab the, I'm going to stab him, funnel him to my safety. And then once I get somebody popped out, now I'm going to keep that sale. This is what we call a sale technique. Okay. Salient, once I see that vertical, I'm going to snap my hips and I'm going to get in phase. So this is a good look. This is a good look at that. Again, again, linebacker needs to keep climbing, climbing on, on that uh, wall too. But you can see right here that we're in good technique. Safety, safety just needs to do a little bit better job of leveraging that guy, not looking at the quarterback, staying on that top hip. But you can see that technique from the beginning from the corner. I'm going to be, it looks like I'm, I'm going to be hard pressing, but it's not. I'm going to stab, sail technique, flip the hips, get in phase. So let's go back over what we talked about. Why do we press? We press to eliminate the route tree, create predictable outcomes for our players, 
Wide receivers hate contact. Offense wants to create space. We're a defense. We're going to try and eliminate space. Funnel the play. Play basketball. We talked about soft versus hard techniques. What that looks like. I showed you what a soft press looks like, what a hard press looks like. And then obviously the different techniques, talking about make technique when I don't have any help, hard technique when I just want to physically dominate the receiver, one double, how that leverage works. And then obviously the last one was to bail. Uh, again, I think press is a great tool to help uh, DBs. I think that it doesn't necessarily matter the athletic ability of that kid. If you can teach a soft press, most of these kids can probably play basketball, right? And they can, they, they understand one-on-one. -on -one. They understand, Hey, look, I, I'm not going to let this kid dunk on me. Now, obviously you get some of these better receivers. You, you, in your mind, you want, well, I need to bail out. I need to get it. Well, look, that kid's probably already faster than your other kid. Okay. So create ways that maybe one, you can play some one double or you can press and funnel that receiver and get it to where maybe they can play a trail technique. So maybe you play like a little bit of two man over top of that. So that safety can play one or the other, or we played one double. So make sure, you know, you kind of are, are leaning on that way. There's different techniques. There's different ways of playing press. It's not just camp press where we just get up and it's just, Hey, mono and mono. I'm just trying to punk this guy. Like I said, I don't, I don't teach it that way. That's not real football. I want to make sure anytime that we press, Look, when we press, we're playing on a knife's edge. But then again, when you're a corner, that's what you signed up for. I tell my kids all the time, look, man, they signed up. You signed up for this. You signed up for corner. You got put over here. You decide you want to play corner. This is this is this is the life you chose. This is what we're going to do. And we're going to live on the knife's edge. So technique is everything in press. You cannot just say, hey, go line up guard that receiver you have to teach the basics of the technique before you can get into the schematics of the defense so uh, i want to make sure that my when my kids line up against the, the receiver for the first time that they are comfortable they understand leverage they understand where their eyes should be eyes bring the feet make sure the hands are down eyes down and then i'm, I'm punching in the correct area you know i wanted to i want i tell them to punch the peck thumbs up you know, a, a lot of D line plays a lot like DB play. It's it's pretty it's pretty uncanny of how similar they are, uh, just in terms of hand placement, hand fighting, uh, and just kind of leverage and things like that. So I try and bring that in. You know, we want we want to be powerful when we press. Thanks again for joining me today for the Art of X show. Make sure you subscribe to the Substack. Anything that you need MQ, whether it's from the template shop or it's an article that you were trying to look up, make sure you go to matchquarters.com. Follow me on Twitter at the underscore coach underscore A. Follow the hashtag Art of X and make sure to subscribe to the YouTube. Thanks for joining me.